everyone. This is Adriana and joined again with my beautiful grandmother, Caitlin here. Welcome back to Heart to Heart Astrology Podcast, where we share our perspectives on the coming astrology and all the energy going on in our lives uh, with a galactic perspective. So we're both galactic astrologers. If you're new here, um, I'm based actually in the UK. I've been an intuitive tarot reader for over four years now and a galactic astrologer now and a past life reader. Yeah, I'm very happy to be doing this uh, amazing podcast here, sharing um, our different perspectives as granddaughter and grandmother here. And I'm Caitlin. I um been doing things metaphysically pretty much my whole life, but um, more actively involved for like good, a good 27 years. So uh, all types of modalities. Astrology is the newest, um, but Reiki, yoga, Qigong, all kinds of fun things. <laughs> I'm a crazy lady, but I'm having fun. <laughs> you can never have too much. And I've learned so much too from Caitlin, from both my grandparents, my uh, Papa Enzo too. So yeah. <laughs> learned a lot yeah. from you guys. He's even more crazy than me. We'll have to have him yeah. as a guest someday. <laughs> A good crazy runs in the family. <laughs> so if you've been watching us for the past few months and you've been enjoying our videos, please uh, do share our videos to your friends that you think might be interested. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe to our channels. I'm Starry Sky Readings. Uh, Caitlin is Bhakti Galactic Healing. We will have our channel names in the description below. So you might be watching it on either channel or even the Galactic Astrology YouTube as well. Do comment down below if anything that we talk about today resonates. So I'll go ahead and grab a tea or coffee like we always say. I have my spooky cup. I'm ready for spooky season. <laughs> this, this is, is my the coffee favorite. Cup I have. <laughs> oh, very cute. <laughs> I like we both got the pink cups today. So I'm Sweet. ready for Halloween if you can't tell. <laughs> grab something to drink and just listen in. Don't feel that you have to necessarily watch the video, but even just listening in, I love listening to different videos while I'm doing things. Cleaning the house. Yes. If you are traveling somewhere, we, have us, we set it up so we try to be entertaining. And uh, But um, but really listening is, is the best. It really is. I agree. Be starting us off, I did want to just also mention um, that we do... Um, astrological reports and personal readings. Both of us are available and you can see it in our description. Uh, we just have our emails is how you can contact us. And we've been meeting some of you that have been watching us and are working with you. And we thank you, Namaste, for contacting us. And it's been wonderful. We've had a lot of fun and are making new friends. Um, it's just been amazing. So here we go. What's happening in the world now? Uran Uranus retrograde is September 1st. And this is in Taurus. And it's going to last till January 30th, 2025. Um, we've actually been in the pre-shadow since May 15th. Um, and this is all taking place in Taurus, by the way. Um, we actually uh, are retrograding on the 1st. And then we will turn direct on the 30th of 2025. But then there's the post-shadow that lasts all the way till May 17th, 2025. So it's really a, a whole like yearly process with Uranus and all of these outer planets, everything moves so much slower and takes a much longer time. But let's talk more about what um, you can be looking for during this period of time. So the 1st through the 30th of January, um, it's important to be looking more within. So when we have retrogrades, it's an opportunity to do that. I really feel with just about any planet, it's less um, constant external stuff and focus there so much as it's going inside. How can I change things in me? How can I apply this Uranus energy inside myself? Well, Uranus is an electrifier. And Uranus brings us shockwaves of growth and freedom. And when Uranus goes retrograde for those five months, 
it actually will bring a little bit more of a calm energy versus in the spring when we are we are the direct energy okay we have more energy things can be erupting a little bit more less of the calmness so there's a an interesting paradox that comes up with uranus and taurus we will be come more grounded in our body during this retrograde um, and then we're better rooted to manifest states of higher consciousness and be here now. So it's not like we're on this ascension journey and we're all pointing up and we're going to rise up into the heavens. It's the heavens are here. They're around us. We are layered beings. And when we have, um, uh, when we are working more within, we are definitely more present. It's that be here now energy and that was that term was kind of coined by a wonderful guru named Ram Das, who has crossed over, but he has a wonderful book called "Be Here Now," which is a great read. Um, but excuse me, Uranus and Taurus, well, in retrograde, may help your inward relationship with security. And when you're connected to your highest self, you may release contracting and limiting energies allowing more of who you truly are to be grounded in life. Uranus retrograde in zodiac sign of Taurus is at 27 degrees and is actually conjunct with Algol, fixed star Algol at 26 degrees, which happens to uh, be in the Perseus constellation and on September uh, 2nd, and also opposite Alpha Centauri at 29 degrees, which is in the Centaurus constellation. So this, this can bring an opportunity to speak your truth and not hold your tongue, okay? Remember, you can do this utilizing what I call satya. I may have mentioned this in other videos. And satya is one of Patanjali's five yamas. And the yamas are wonderful um, energies and directions towards how we can live our life um, with more fullness, with more uh, self-realization. So satya means compassionate truth. So say what you mean, but you don't have to be mean. That's a way to look at it. Um, there are two fixed stars, though, that are showing up with very close orbs to Mars. And this really came through a lot of guidance for me to talk about um, these particular fixed stars today. Um, and Mars is going to be right now in the zodiac sign of Gemini which is all about communication. It's about learning. Um, and it may bring us um, an opportunity to learn more and to communicate not only um, from how we receive things, but how we speak and how we share. So I couldn't understand why my guides kept yakking about Mars, but then I went a little deeper in searching and it's because Mars and Gemini is in a semi-sextile with Uranus retrograde in Taurus. So the semi-sextile is a more subtle, more minor aspect energy, but sometimes these can be very important. Um, and the two fixed stars that are Polaris and Betelgeuse, um, and these could be extremely helpful energies during the first week of September. We have um, this conjunction with both of them. The I'm going to tell you how tight this is, Adri. Listen, 0 0.02 with mm -hmm. Polaris. Yeah, that's very <laughs> and, exact. Yes. And 0 0.09 with Betel Goose. So they are, that's why it jumped out. Um, and there's been a lot of yak about other connections. And this one just stood out for some reason. I'm sure we'll find out as we go further into the fall. So how can the Polarian energies help us? Um, and, it, and it's not only helping us with this Uranus retrograde, but also the new moon in Virgo. So as I speak about these, they're here for both. Um, they may help us to search for more purpose and meaning in our experiences. And again, I talked a little bit about how Uranus retrograde is bringing us toward inward freedom. So important to explore your inner spiritual gifts. Um, and then you may discover a fresh perspective or a new light. And Polarian star seeds are wonderful in directing us and guiding us that way. And they also have um, strong Kundalini awakenings happening. Um, if you have Polaris in your chart, Adrian and I can do um, your report and find out, do you have a lot of uh, Polarian energy? 
um, or betel goose that's coming up as well. You have to find that in uh, with what we do in the search through galactic astrology. The Polarians are saying it's important to be easy on yourself during this time, more loving self-care, more connecting to nature, um, and especially releasing any neediness of Virgo's desire for perfection, <laughs> okay? Uh, we've had a lot of Virgo energy going on and it's going to continue in September. Um, so Polarians know there is no such thing as perfection and encourage you to embrace yourself with unconditional love. So let's look at um, Betelgeuse. Um, this is the fixed star in the Orion constellation and carries many beautiful traits such as natural charisma, talent, success, and even fame. So how can they help you during this first week of September? Again, Uranus retrograde in Taurus is bringing more inward directed energy. So ask yourself these questions. Am I determined to succeed? Am I utilizing all my resources? Am I able to help myself upgrade my consciousness and raise my vibrational frequency and then help others to do the same towards a higher level? That's so exciting. That's a sense of that community raising energy. So these are some of the gifts of Betelgeuse star seeds. Um, but one of their most important is humor. They may present you with many opportunities to laugh at yourself and to become more light. So that's what I had to share. Adriana, I'll turn it over to you, honey. Yeah, I uh, will just quickly say to you before I share, I had somebody who had Polaris as I believe their North node and how prominent is that to have mm -hmm. that life path there of Polaris guiding you towards something. And it was really beautiful to dive into that reading for her and to really show that there is this uh, constant sense of direction in her life. Um, and no matter what obstacles were thrown, Polaris was just keeping her back on track. So yeah. I just thought of that when you were sharing that. North Star, I love that. <laughs> it's perfect. Yeah, really great findings um, on the Uranus retrograde. Um, I think that was definitely important to share and a good catch on those really tight orbs too. Um, yeah, very tight. Stars. Semi sextile too between Mars mm -hmm. and uh, and and um, Uranus. Yeah. Yeah, like you said, I think even though it's a little bit more subtle, I think still significant. Some of those subtle ones when you start. Uh, learning about the minor aspects, they can be incredible, especially the, the quincunx. That's mm -hmm. like uh, Rick Levine always says, it's the mosquito in the room. And we all know <laughs> how the mosquito buzzing around our ears bugs us, right? Yeah. So the minor ones can actually with uh, ultra sensitive people, like all of us that are involved in watching this and living yeah. these lifestyles, uh, the, look into the minor aspects. That might be a fun video for us to do down the road together. I would love to do yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I, yeah, I'm gonna be sharing about the Virgo new moon, uh, which is at 11 degrees on September 3rd, um, or it might be September 2nd, depending where you live. Might be in the late hours um, of the United States. I'm Like I mentioned, I'm in the UK, so it is gonna be at 2.55 a.m. UK time on September 3rd is when it'll actually start. And you can check in your own natal chart where 11 degrees is too, to see perhaps where this Virgo new moon is going to be influencing your chart. But we are going to share horoscopes on that. So do stick around for your general horoscope on your sun, moon, and rising sign. So we're going to get into that. And it's also going to be enmeshing the Uranus retrograde energies going on as well. So what I wanted to talk about specifically with the new moon um, in Virgo is that it is opposing Saturn and Pisces. Uh, and Saturn has been in retrograde, uh, I, I believe, for the past few months now till uh, November 15th, 2024. So Saturn retrograde will be till November 15th. Um, I do feel that this alignment is challenging us to actually slow down and pause evaluating, especially with Saturn energy there, evaluating our career, our goals, and mm -hmm. even our beliefs with that Piscean element. So are there boundaries you need to set in place for yourself? Uh, can you make practical steps 
out of a victim consciousness, if you are operating in that, if you feel you are operating in that, the earthy energy of Virgo and Saturn may make us feel a bit uh, stuck in the mud with Pisces, the water energy. So take your time processing and evaluating things one step at a time. Okay, so one foot in front of the other through this. This Saturn in Pisces is also conjunct, uh, I hopefully I'm saying this correctly, Akernar. This is the brightest and last fixed star uh, at the end of the river constellation of Eridanus. So, and actually, I when I was researching more about Eridanus, they didn't see Akanar till later on. Uh, there was a long time because it was in the Southern Hemisphere that it was not visible for the longest time. So I thought that was interesting. Now it is visible and we know that that is actually the very end of uh, Eridanus, which is shown as a river. So it's yes. at the very end. Yeah. Hmm. I did not know and it is said to have a very Jupiter-like nature, this fixed star. Um, and the Eridanus constellation itself is located near Orion and Cetus constellations. Some saw it was meant to depict the actual uh, Nile River in Egypt or Euphrates in ancient Mesopotamia. In classic astrology, alignments to Eridanus bring omens of rain, which wouldn't be too surprising, honestly, at this time of year, especially in the West. Uh, we might see more rainfall, to be honest, um, with the autumn season, again, depending where you're at in the world. And so, yes, I do think that with this aligning to Pisces this month, there could be a higher chance of rainfall. So a little weather prediction on my part here. <laughs> so also a message, though, of opening the floodgates was coming through. I was getting that kind of downloaded. Um, so I thought worth mentioning, opening the floodgates, that Saturnian energy mixed with Pisces, karmic cycles and government influences showing its head, uh, which wouldn't be surprising at this time. You know, there's a lot of political things happening. Yes. So I wonder what that could be opening the floodgates. So we will see what that could entail. So are there cycles keeping you trapped? There are many on a collective level, but individually reflect on how can you take steps towards more security and stability. It was very interesting. I didn't know about um, that connection with Egypt and how that is kind of viewed like the Nile in the sky. I love that. Yeah. That was something new. I really, I love that. Great visual. Yeah, <laughs> I, I like how it was kind of, they were seeing it as like almost a mirror. Mm -hmm. you know? As above, so below. <laughs> yes, definitely. Oh, yes, that's hermetic, hermetic philosophy that uh, Enzo, your papa, and I are studying <laughs> every time. <Yeah. laughs> we love it. Okay, so now I'm going to share a tarot card message on this alignment happening. So I'm using actually my, oh, there it is, my cat tarot. Let's get a tarot message on the new moon energies with Uranus retrograde for the beginning of September. Wow, quite a message there. The tower card, things mm -hmm. crumbling down so new things can rebuild. So mm -hmm. anything that has been placed on shaky or unstable foundation is going to come down at this time, whether you kind of like it or not, <laughs> it's happening. I feel like that's really that Uranus uh, retrograde energy coming in and even uh, that opposition to Saturn and Pisces too. Okay. But it's, uh, I think, needed, definitely. Yeah. I feel like it's divine intervention kind of coming in here. There's a wave of divine feminine, divine feminine energy pouring in right now, big time. And we talked about it in our last video. Mm -hmm. uh, wave, It's huge. Yeah, so, you know, seeing this tower moment can be happening in our personal lives or, you know, externally, of course, too, in yep. the world <laughs> at large. So definitely tower moments happening. Anything, again, that has been put in place um, on shaky ground that's just not stable, not meant to be, it's going to come down so that new things 
can be built back up again. Yep. And uh, we are going to go into the horoscopes. Please do check your sun, moon, and rising sign. I will post the timestamps uh, in the comments below. Uh, I'll try to do it as soon as I can. Sometimes I don't get to it right away, but I, I will try my best. And if you've made it this far, please do like this video. And yeah, I think we'll just get straight to our horoscopes then. Um, well, happy birthday to, to Virgo. <laughs> um, Virgos, there's been a lot going on. Um, you are still center stage. So Virgos, suns, moons, and ascendants. Uh, the new moon on September 2nd is in your sign and Uranus retrograde is transiting your first house of self-identity. Okay, Virgo, it's time to let your freak flags fly. Okay, what does that mean? Some of the people my age might remember this uh, David Crosby song called Almost Cut My Hair, <laughs> coming way back from uh, their Deja Vu album. Um, so it's time to kind of reflect back and look at, was there things that have happened that made you ever question your individuality? Did you feel judged about it? Did you kind of crawl under a rock about it? So the Polarians and Betel Goose energies, both are very powerful healers, and they are here to help you to see how you can transform perceived weaknesses as absolute strengths in your soul life. My guides have given me a healing prescription to share with you all about how you may begin to transmute and transform what may have hurt you most. Um, so I would like to just share it. This I use a lot in my healing work. Um, and this is what it is. And maybe I will include it in the description of our video. I am divine humility, embracing vulnerabilities as true soul strengths in growth, journey, and purpose for the very highest good. So affirmations may be very helpful in realigning with your authentic self in healing your first house. Being tr your true self may be ultra liberating and very much needed right now, especially during your new moon, the first week of September. Beautiful affirmation. Mm. Oh, thank you. Yes. Okay, Leos, uh, Leo sun, moon, and risings. This Virgo new moon is affecting your house of values. The Virgo energy is here to help you get on track with your money and finances, getting you in the mood to create a plan and budget. A new opportunity could arise during this time, or you may feel more motivated with your current endeavors. With the moon uh, opposing Saturn, it might even serve as a bit of a wake-up call if things have been feeling um, unstable with finances, uh, perhaps even coming from a boss or manager who won't budge in giving you a pay raise uh, or even like a promotion that you've been wanting. So time then to take matters into your own hands, Leos. Uh, it may take some time to see the changes you want with Uranus retrograde going on. But remember the tortoise always beats the hare. Okay? <laughs> Reflect on and re and write out, if you'd like, short-term goals to get you to your long-term. It's hard for Leo to become a tortoise. <laughs> I know, I was thinking too, writing that, they're like, oh, but, but I'm a lion. That's a great analogy, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> More so a, like a lion turtle <laughs> even the tortoise could be riding on the back of the lioness i could see that there you go. Yeah. <laughs> oh that was good i love that <laughs> all right cancer oh hi there cancer sun moons and ascendants uh adrian and i are both cancer ascendants it's it's been an interesting year huh <laughs> <laughs> it really has but in this time at this time communication is the theme of uh, your new moon in Virgo. So Cancer, your Uranus retrograde is transiting your third house of intellect. So it could be very much time to speak your truth and also live, listen for truth as well. Important to balance communication. Sometimes we are talking, talking and not really ever listening or always listening and not contributing. So they think that's super important. So as Uranus retrogrades in your house of learning, take time to look back at the times you did not speak your truth. 
when maybe you swallowed what you wanted to say and almost choked and then are now feeling some regret. Uh, the Polarians may help you to release impossible conditions you place on yourself and shine a light on how you how lovable you are, just as you are. Many cancers may have a challenge with stepping into the healing vibrancy of self-love. And Betelgeuse energies may swoop in and say it's time to communicate your abilities and talents and to not hide your light under a bushel. It's time to take it out because it's kind of crucial. So I've just, I don't know why, but when I was writing these, I'm getting all these, like, this is from Godspell. <laughs> these words from Godspell. Anyway, so another wonderful uh, flash from the back, a flashback from the past. So sharing your ideas, feelings, and thoughts, maybe through a blog, aligns well with the new moon in Virgo energies impacting your third house. Um, watch out for overthinking, overanalyzing, and be willing to step back and surrender to help bring in the peace of mental clarity. Gemini, sun, moon, and risings. This Virgo new moon is impacting your home and family life. You may be making plans and writing lists of things to get done around the house at this time. Uranus retrograde going on might make it feel a bit difficult to see the end results as soon as you like. Whether you're looking for a new home or making changes in your home, don't forget to stop and smell the roses, Gemini. See and appreciate how far you've come and where you're at now. All around, you'll be seeing and feeling a sense of security with your home um, and just your home life in general, the people you call your family, and just wanting more time at home. Some of you may even be thinking of starting a family or settling down. Remember, family isn't always perfect, but you chose the people you call your family for a reason. Find your happiness in more domestic life leisures at this time without worrying about all the nitty gritty details. Taurus, sun, moons, and ascendant, you may have cause to celebrate Taurus because Uranus retrograde in your sign is transiting your fifth house of play and fun. So time for your inner child to play. Uranus retrograde is saying to you, don't take life so seriously. Time to lighten up and Betelgeuse energies may step in to send you funny signs to make you laugh. The Polarians may step in to help you explore your inner spiritual gifts and you may discover a fresh perspective in a new light. Uh, the new moon in Virgo moves through your fifth house of pleasure, play, creative self-expression, and bringing joy. So feel yourself grounding into a more positive sense of gratitude. Welcome new energies into your life and explore a new creative endeavor. Or maybe there's a hobby or special talent you have ignored for a while. This is a great time to bring it back into your life and you may breathe a new perspective into it that helps you grow lighter and brighter. Aries, sun, moon, and risings. This Virgo new moon is affecting your daily routines, Aries. It's time to take care of setting good routines and healthy habits in day-to-day -day mundane life. Virgo season is a great time for planning things and tidying up loose ends, but be easy on the perfectionism as Virgo, of course, can bring those tendencies. So if you've been needing to get yourself back on track in your routines and even fitness or health goals, uh, this is a good time to get a start on it. The first step is always the hardest part. Uranus retrograde might not be helping you get motivated, but you don't have to be perfect in your routines. Give yourself some grace. Slow and steady wins the race. It will be, I didn't mean for that to rhyme actually. <laughs> I just realized that as I was reading. There you go. It will be well worth it over the coming months. Be also mindful of your overall health at this time. Uh, being mindful too, especially of what you consume, Aries. Okay, Pisces, we come to you. Suns, moons, and ascendants. Uranus retrograde is transiting through your seventh house of sharing and partnering. So Uranus in retrograde is saying it may be a good time to go a little polar 
Now, what do I mean? That means stepping into the new moon in Virgo with focus on freedom for yourself and an inward look and not projecting onto your partner, your personal grievances and issues. This is what we call mirror work. Look at your partner and say to yourself, I am that. These are the words of the great Swami Vivekananda. So what does this mean? In a nutshell, it means your partner may hold 99% of what it is that bugs you. But until you're able to see the 1% in yourself with clarity, nothing will change. You can jump to another partner. And if you have not recognized this in yourself, it will continue until you finally do. As you own and begin to heal this 1% in you, in your in you, your relationship may begin to shift and this change in you may help you see more clearly. In the wise words of Mahatma Gandhi, be the change that you wish to see in the world. So you become that which you seek in your partner to be. So one of the things I love about you, Pisces, is your ability to never give up on your dreams. And Betel Goo's star guides are perfect cheerleaders for you. So take heart and know your efforts to work on yourself may bring you an opportunity toward a fresh start in your significant relationships. The Aquarius sun, moons, and risings. The Virgo new moon energy is having you face your inner shadow. So it's playing in your eighth house. So going deep. Just like the moon going dark at this time with the new moon, you too may feel the urge to hide away. Use this time for introspection and getting in touch with your needs, goals, ambitions, desires, whatever it may be. Also take care of your mental health at this time, Aquarius. Be extra gentle on yourself, especially if you're feeling the slowed down lull of Uranus, your ruling planet in retrograde. Listen to your mind and body and allow yourself to transform slowly like a caterpillar uh, waiting to become the butterfly. Yes, this can be even wrapping yourself up in a blanket cocoon, <laughs> journaling, mm -hmm. meditating uh, on whatever you're feeling or new, uh, new prospects you want to bring in as the new moon does help with bringing new things in whether finance goals or even some mental health strength that you might need to help you through any roadblocks that you are facing. I got a, a butterfly right there. Yeah. <laughs> that was perfect for you. The one Actually, you just funny enough. I saw a lot of butterflies today, more than I've ever seen too. Oh, wow. Maybe That's there's funny. a sign there. Oh, you you're go. having this Aquarius stellium. So <laughs> Yeah, that's true. <laughs> okay, Capricorn, sun, moons, and ascendants. Uranus retrograde is transiting through your ninth house. And I'm calling this house soulful living. Ooh. Okay, I like that. <laughs> uh, your sister sign is the new moon in Virgo. And some good news. Things may be calming down finally, and you can catch your breath. Yay. This is uh, Adriana's and my sun sign. Yeah. Take time, take some time to allow yourself to look within during the Uranus retrograde at how you are aligning with your philosophy of life. Are you able to focus on a spiritual practice or even an educational deep dive in learning something new, which may help you expand your vision to encompass soul growth? So the Polarians and Betel Goose Stars guides may help you lift into a higher reality of fifth dimensional alignment, which may help you shift your outlook on life. You may experience a star seed awakening or a deeper awakening. You may feel encouraged to write a blog about what you have discovered within you, or maybe create a video on YouTube as a podcaster to share your wisdom. <laughs> That's exactly what we do. <laughs> I love that. So Capricorn, it is an opportunity to open your vision and wash away all untruths you may have bought into. Time for a new enlightened perspective. Very powerful. Yeah, very. Okay, so Sagittarius, 
sun, moons, and risings. The Virgo new moon is getting you in check with your career and business goals. The Virgo energy is calling on you to start getting things done, especially during this whole season, Virgo season. Checking off your to-do list, whether it be mundane tasks, uh, goals towards your career ventures, or any plans you have in place. The post-shadow period of Mercury retrograde may have you on a slow moving start because we just finished up Mercury retrograde, thank goodness. <laughs> We're mm. still in the post shadow right now. So you may have a slow start, but you'll do well with getting a jump on things. Many of you will even have the travel bug. If you didn't plan a trip yet, maybe during Mercury retrograde, you were making plans, um, but not you know booking things yet. Um, if you didn't plan a trip yet, even a short one, you'll be eyeing some new familiar places to see. Some new or familiar places to see, sorry. Uh, perhaps even traveling for work could come up. With the opposition to Saturn and Pisces, uh, do watch out for people in the workplace um, testing you or even pushing your buttons a little bit, which could especially mm -hmm. come from a person in charge. Um, with that Saturn energy. It may not be you directly, Sagittarius. It could be amongst coworkers, but stay grounded and stay focused on your vision. Mars is also mm -hmm. conjunct Polaris at this time. So you could feel much more motivated um, in following your sense of purpose or direction, no matter what hiccups could be thrown your way. So stick to mm -hmm. it. <laughs> Yeah, that's a powerful one. Mm -hmm. Well, hi, Scorpio, suns, moons, and ascendants. Dear Scorpio, Uranus retrograde is transiting your 11th house of networking. So Scorpio, it's time to stop judging yourself and others as well as thinking others are judging you. Bottom line, none of us can know what others are thinking. And so step away from projecting. Here's an opportunity while Uranus is in retrograde to dissolve stereotypes and limiting patterns. Maybe it's time to authentically reinvent yourself. Time to become your own public relations consultant. This new moon in Virgo is blessing your 11th house of community, friendships, hopes and dreams, moving you toward a kinder future. This is an opportunity to align with the energies of belonging and stop pushing away the ones who do truly love you. The Polarians and Betelgeuse energies may be able to guide you in recognizing your natural charisma and how to shine your soul light, magnetizing a new job, career, social groups, and kindred spirits with same interests and values. <laughs> hey Libras, uh, Libra, Sun, Moon, and Risings. This Virgo new moon is highlighting your ancestral roots and even spirituality. With the new moon opposing Saturn, for some of you, this could relate actually to your father or your father's side of the family or the lineage. Your relationship to him or to that side may be coming up for you actually. Uh, at this time to reflect on. Do you feel resistance in this area, Libras? Opposing beliefs and views might come up um, even if unprovoked. Uh, substance abuse and manipulations could even show its ugly head, but we do have that with Pisces. Um, if you are trying to break away from ancestral curses or patterns, now is the time. If you already have these similar themes, may just come back up again for you to reflect on as a sort of spiritual check-in. So Uranus is also in retrograde, so changes that you wish to be made will take some time. Just remember, Libras, you can't change others, but you can change how you navigate your life. For most of you, Libras, it's important that you catch up on your beauty sleep. So I think this is a message for all of you. <laughs> catch up on your sleep at this time. Take things slow and easy, especially the start of this month of September. Ease into your birthday coming up with a sense of optimism and how far you've come. Mm -hmm. Wow. 
every single one of these horoscopes are power packed. Yeah, are, they are. You are in a very interesting time. Very exciting. Yeah, yeah. Take it, take it easy, everybody. Thank you all for joining us uh, for this this wonderful episode that we've had. We'll be back again soon for our next video, so stay tuned for that. Um, please subscribe if you haven't already and like this video, and we will see you in the next one. Namaste.